This show is brought to you by Squarespace and Click It or Ticket. Hey guys and welcome to episode 5 of Food Mob, the interactive cooking show where we share all your recipes and photos and teach you a few handy tricks in the kitchen. I'm going to start off this week uh, by telling you we are cooking Aaron's Disgusted because we're cooking prawns which he doesn't like. Uh, we're going to make a nice little fresh pasta with prawns, garlic, lemon, parsley, absolutely delicious. And we'll show you a really good tip with wine which we'll have in the second part of the show. Gonna start off with some of the photos from last week. Unbelievable response, probably because it was the perfect burger. A lot of debate, a lot of people talking about what should be in the perfect burger, but tons and tons of photos, and I wanna start looking at a few of those. Really, really impressed by some of these. So the first one I've got, actually nothing to do with burgers, is Food Mob Vanilla Lemon Sugar. So you might remember for viewers who are watching, I think it was maybe episode two, Rob, was it? Or yeah, around yeah, two or three. We made this, and I haven't actually opened it yet, um, you can see the photo here from, uh, who's that by? Lorena Marks. Lorena Marks has done it really well, scooped out her vanilla. We put some uh, lemon peel in here. And if I open it up, come smell that. Unbelievable. So that's been in there for two or three weeks. Oh my God. You gave us quite a bit of, quite a bit of abuse Aaron gave us at the time for making it. It's absolutely stunning. We might even make some uh, biscuits or something with that in an upcoming recipe. So she's actually gone ahead, I think it's a she, Lorena, yeah, has gone ahead and made that. Yeah, looks, looks absolutely uh, absolutely gorgeous. She's only got a couple of weeks to make. Second photo um, is sent in, actually a question. Holy Jaw, sent in his burger. Now as you can see, it, it's slightly pink in the center there. And he asked me on Twitter, he's really worried. He said, look, is this gonna kill me? I've just eaten it. I wasn't sure, but I couldn't sort of stop. I had to eat it. Is the pink in the middle gonna kill me? The answer is no, as long as your meat comes from a sort of a reputable source, it's not gone off or it's not bad, no problems. Cook your burger nice and pink in the center. Won't be any problems at all. Looks like a great burger, he's done a fantastic job there. Uh, next picture is P1080023, another brilliantly uh, thought up username. This, out of all the burger pictures that I picked, I think this is one of the sort of, looks like the juiciest. He's got lovely buns there. Nice buns. He's done, I think the wedge is in the oh, background. Cool. Nice buns. Can you see this one, Let me see. Egg wow. Can you see that, Aaron? He's done the wedges. Done the wedges. Drop that into the water. <laughs> uh, he's done the wedges from a couple of weeks ago. And this one, P1, has actually got a corn on the cob, which is, looks really nice. Pick one more. As I said, I'm literally picking the best photos here. There's so many that have come in from all episodes in the past week. So Sandy0248 has got his little food mob uh, on his iPhone, which really made us smile with people out there actually using the, using the show. Obviously he has it beside him when he's cooking. Pretty cool photo, I thought. And one last one, also on Flickr. Don't forget people, I've seen people uploading their photos to everywhere, Twitter, forums, Facebook. Put them all in Flickr so it's a sort of a collaborative group because it's so much fun to look through uh, all the old episodes. This is 10 times better than even our burger last week. Sent in by you God, and he said, everything made from scratch, lettuce is homegrown. I even made the burger rolls buns myself. So he's made the buns, he's growing the lettuce, he's put the bacon in there, he's got everything in there totally from scratch. Mind boggling, I think he should be on here. He, yeah, should be on here presenting the show um, instead of us, because he's gone to so much effort. Probably took him about three weeks though, which we wouldn't really have time to do. Um, okay. One more thing that I spotted on Facebook, for all of you people who want to interact on Facebook, we've got really cool behind the scenes content going up there, photos, stuff like that, great interaction. This is beyond belief, this really made us smile. So, a girl viewer called Rachel Fallig, okay, has written in saying, I'd just like to say thank you, thank you, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, my boyfriend and I are big Revision 3 fans and I was over ecstatic once they picked up your wonderful cooking show. Thanks very much. My boyfriend has, and here's the best part, willingly made me meal after meal of pure deliciousness. As we speak, he's in the kitchen making amazing garlic bread, blah, 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 but here's the interesting part. Basically, you single-handedly helping him get laid more frequently. And I got a good meal out of this, which is perfect trade-off in my book. Thanks again, and keep up the fantastic work. So what Rachel Fallig is saying is basically she's getting laid, or her boyfriend is getting laid because of the show. So I think our job, if the show was to end tomorrow, I think our job would be done. I think round of applause for, uh, for Rachel and her, uh, and her boyfriend, getting it on because of Food Mob. Um, we'll go back to a few more of those interactions after, but loads of photos, keep them coming in. 
foodmob.com, sorry, facebook.com forward slash foodmob, Twitter, loads of questions, follow us on Twitter and send in loads of questions, we're foodmobtv, twitter.com foodmobtv, and uh, yeah, we're always there to interact in the forums, wherever you want. This week's show, loads of interaction there, keep the photos coming from this week's show, but this week's show we're going to start off with a gorgeous little pasta recipe. I actually picked this up from the forums. Aaron has discussed it because we're making seafood, which he hates. But lots of people asking if we could have some seafood, if we could have some sort of uh, little pasta dish. If you want to sort of get your recipe featured on the show, go into the forums. That's where we want to hear about it. That's where I sort of go in and get inspiration from. So lots of people in there. Um, we're going to keep it simple and kind of healthy. A few people giving out about the burgers and the steaks and saying it's not the sort of food that you could eat every day. This little pasta dish is something that I actually make for myself uh, when I get home in the evening. I think we all lead pretty busy lives um, and you might only have sort of 10-15 minutes to cook, cook up something in the evening. So this is the dish you're looking for. So a little bit of garlic. I've obviously got the water on already for my pasta. So first step is to get your water on. Lots and lots of garlic. I want this to have a nice kick. This little herb here, thyme, which I have a little uh, bush, what do you call that a bush? Plant off over here. <laughs> yeah. um, fresh thyme, really, really aromatic and fragrant. It's a hard herb, stands up to cooking really well, and it'll just uh, give a nice body to, to our sauce. So just pick those leaves off. You don't want those stalky bits. Can you see that, Aaron? Couldn't eat that. It's like a tree. Don't want that in your sauce. So thyme leaves, um, lemon zest. So I'm just making a little sort of pile here of all my ingredients. Someone else that actually came out of the forums um, in the recipe section, everybody, hundreds of people looking for pizza. So um, I think that's the first recipe that we're going to sort of green light that's been sort of user generated. And what I'm going to actually do, if you go down to the bottom of the screen, it says discuss if you're on revision three. Um, in there I'm going to set up a little pizza forum. So we're going to shoot that I think in two weeks time. Send in your toppings. Tell us what you want to see on that pizza. Um, and the forum is the place to discuss that. We'll pick a few of the best ones and we'll do those toppings live on the show. Doesn't get more interactive than that. Right, lemon zest, garlic, thyme. Three really strong, pungent flavors. Olive oil. Into my frying pan, generous amount of olive oil. Now as that comes up to the heat, I'm just gonna turn it up to sort of a low to medium heat. It's gonna cook slowly. I'm gonna tell you about our first sponsor, which this week is Squarespace. So Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. Squarespace offers a unique, flexible tool for just about anyone. No coding experience required to build high-end, complex websites with the same functionality that you would find on some of the highest traffic pages on the web. What does that mean in plain English if you don't understand technology? Basically, you can go along and set up your own website. Somebody as stupid as Aaron could even go along there and in 10 minutes, <laughs> in 10 minutes basically set up his own website, tinker around with it, drag and drop stuff. It's really, really easy. You don't need any coding experience. So if you're watching this and you're not a techie, don't worry, go on to Squarespace and you'll have your own website. Great way of supporting the show. Get your own website going. Now, back to the dish. Oil coming up to a little gentle sizzle. Now, if you see this up nice and close, Aaron, you'll see that our thyme, our garlic, and our lemon zest are going in there. Really strong flavors. Now, you've probably all once in your life had burnt garlic. It's when the garlic cooks too fast and it goes all brown and it's really sort of mm, bitter and not very nice at all. Because we're gonna cook this at a low temperature, we're gonna get maximum flavor coming out of there. So, just simmering that gently. As that starts to cook, I'm gonna tell you about the pasta. This pasta, don't worry about the brand or anything, comes from the supermarket and you find it in the fridge section where they have fresh pastas. It means that it cooks in about two minutes flat, takes no time to cook whatsoever, and it's the way forward because nobody has time to be waiting around for 10, 15 minutes for pasta. Really, really nice and delicious. Into our oil, into our oil, into our water, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt. Very important to add salt to the water. Any Italian will tell you this. Pasta is absolutely delicious when you have it in restaurants, etc., because they put salt in the water and it sort of absorbs it. Gorgeous. So that's that's one little secret. Now, generous amount of pasta. It's literally going to take. Just look at the bag for instructions. This one takes three minutes. So in that three minutes, we're going to make our sauce. That just shows you how simple it is. Another thing that we've been getting lots of feedback in the forums on is keep it simple. 
which we have been doing. A couple of ingredients here, lemons, garlic, prawns, parsley, nothing complicated. Right, so smell that. Can you smell that over there? Getting a whiff. Rob is getting a whiff of the sauce. Um, smells absolutely delicious. We're just trying to extract that flavor. Little prawns, pre-cooked, just for handiness. Past is sort of handy. These are handy because they're cooked. We want to keep it simple. We don't want to complicate stuff. By all means, if you want to go and get fresh prawns and peel them and all that stuff, great, but don't have time for most of us. Okay, so simmering, in go our prawns. And be generous with the prawns. Don't be a miser because nobody likes a miser and we want to keep it <laughs> sort of... Oh, that funny, was it? Oh, I thought it was funny. Um, nobody likes a miser because you just want a real nice, big, generous portion. There's not a big, heavy sauce or anything going along with this pasta, so loads of prawns. That's what's really gonna make it tasty. Now, parsley, picking it off. You just wanna get rid of those stalks. They're no good. So at this stage, turn your prawns up a little bit. They don't need too much attention whatsoever. And scrunch that parsley up. So see the way I'm just scrunching it into a ball? All the way into a ball, and then using my knife, I can just slowly chop across it like that, and it goes nice and fine. What have you guys been up to this week? Anything exciting? No. Drinking? Or? Yeah, just drinking. Just drinking. What about you, Rob? Taking it easy. The weekend, obviously. Yeah. A lot of people actually as well in the forums want to know more about Aaron and Rob. Um, Rob, maybe introduce yourself, but Rob's a producer on the show, basically. Yeah, that's me, producer. I look after the lads and they behave themselves. Which is a pretty, pretty tricky job. Aaron, that you probably know about enough, is... Uh, are you going to talk or do you want me to tell them? Uh, yeah, go Aaron ahead. is lazy, a drunk, <laughs> and uh, can barely hold the camera up straight. So, now Aaron's, Aaron shoots the show does a great job, edits it, all that sort of stuff. Right, do you hear the prawns sizzling? Perfect. Can't begin to tell you how much flavor's in there. Really, really delicious. At this stage, tongs. Okay, so I don't like messing around with all the sort of strain in the pasta and all this sort of stuff. I'm gonna turn the water off because it's pretty much already cooked. And just like that, I'm gonna pop it in to the prawns. This is a sort of Italian trick that, that's very common, but not many people do it. You want the sauce and the prawns and the garlic and the lemon and all that sort of stuff to coat all of the pasta and make it really nice and saucy. And that's, uh, that's what you're gonna achieve by just putting the pasta straight in like that. So in goes the pasta, lots of chopped parsley. Scrape every last bit off the board. Season it with a little bit of salt. Still people giving out about using too much salt. Salt does give it a lovely little flavor, so don't be scared to use that. And then it's just a case of bringing the whole thing together. So try and toss it like that if you can. If you don't feel confident doing that, we lost one there. I'll have to check that one. Yeah, lovely. It smells good. Oh, it does smell good. Thanks. Gonna give it a little bit of extra flavor with lemon juice. So lots of lemon juice in there. Don't be scared to taste the food as you go along. I think that's a mistake a lot of people do. They just put in um, the sort of what it tells you in the recipe. Put in a bit of salt, put it, but it, like the food changes. So taste it, just get your hand in there, taste it a little bit. Okay, needs a tiny bit more salt. Take it off the heat. So the water's gone. How long have we taken so far? I think that's literally about five or six minutes. Um, so, stir frame up like that. At the same time, real quick, okay? Bread. Just the bread that you get from the store. I'm gonna cut three slices of that. This is the quickest little sort of bruschetta type trick that you could ever have. So, three nice slices of bread. Olive oil. Just cover it on both sides. And then the little bits of garlic that I have left from where I peeled it earlier on, just rub that garlic on. I don't want to make food that's complicated, that takes feckin' forever to make. Like, I just want to make stuff that you can throw together when you get home from work. If you've got a break, if you work at home, like a lot of people do, a lot of sort of people who watch this are techies and programmers. If you're working at home like I used to do, 
and you just want to go in and have a half an hour break and kick your feet up and, and eat something nice. This, that's the sort of food we want to do. We don't want to do something that you need to go and get a hundred ingredients in the shop for. Um, real simple. Okay, pasta, cook. Really smelling and looking delicious. Last thing that we're going to do that's going to bring it together and sort of bind it and make it really delicious is some fresh parmesan. In that goes. A little drizzle of olive oil at the end just to give it a little coating. Look at that bread. Super simple. It's not quite, you know, fully fledged garlic bread, but they're little grilled, uh, I call them bruschettas that you can serve up with this. So generous amount of your pasta. Are you actually going to try it, Aaron? Oh, I have a bit. You just don't like shellfish at all. So in that goes. Generous. See what I mean about the prawns? You don't want to be stingy with those. On they go. Take our bread off because that's cooked and I'll show you one last trick with that. So a tomato that I had in the fridge. Getting a little bit old, a little bit soft, maybe you wouldn't want to eat it. Cut it in half and just squeeze the center of it onto that bread. So what we now have is little sort of baked tomatoey, garlicky breads that are ready in less than a minute. And you can see all those little juices on the outside. See those? Pop them back in for 10 seconds just to cook the tomato. Where's my parmesan? Parmesan on top. A little bit of parsley to make it look pretty. What's her name? Uh, Rachel's boyfriend will definitely be putting parsley on his. <laughs> Extra parsley. <laughs> Extra parsley, he knows what side his bread's buttered on. So your little bread on the side. And that's it. Prawns with spaghetti, lemon, garlic. Absolutely gorgeous. Little grilled breads on the side. Get stuck in there, guys. Yes. Just want to show you some footage of the guys stuffing their faces. Good, Aaron? Oh. <laughs> Lemony. Lemony? So our second sponsor, Click It or Ticket this week. Now this incredibly important message behind this, um, behind this sponsor. Basically, Click It or Ticket is um, a drive to get more people wearing their seatbelts, which should be common logic, but so many people don't. If I read you out some of the facts, Men are less likely than women to buckle up. In 2008, 66% of male drivers and 74% of male passengers, 18 to 34, were killed in passenger vehicles not wearing their seatbelts. Don't become a seatbelt. Don't become a statistic, wear a freaking seatbelt. It's not really rocket science. When you get into the car, buckle up. It takes two seconds, but it could save your life. It's not cool being out there without a seatbelt. It really is the important thing to do. So buckle up. Thanks to our sponsor, Click It or Ticket, this week. Now. Moving straight on from seatbelts to wine. Obviously, don't drink and drive. <laughs> that's, that's the next message which I've just thought of. So that's not our sponsor, but that's pretty important. Okay, loads of times um, when you're out and about. This used to happen to me when I used to be sort of camping or on boats or something like that. You don't have a corkscrew. You've got a bottle of wine. Yourself and a friend want to drink the bottle of wine. Don't know how to do it, right? First problem that you have is this little guy up on top, right? Which normally you get your little knife around and sort of take off and you see them doing it in restaurants real fancy. That's all you have to do, okay? So that's gone, it's not elegant, you're not gonna see your waiter doing that in a restaurant, but it works, okay? Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little old tea towel because this could possibly sort of spill, so you wanna be careful. Wooden spoon, up on top, just cover it over like that and then it's just a case of putting a little bit of weight on it. Just feel for it and it just came out. So now if I lift up the tea towel you'll see that a tiny little bit of the goodness is gone. Um, suck that up, don't obviously, and then you pour your wine. And a little trick actually, it might take a little second, so just pop your little wooden spoon in and first bit is tricky, but then out it comes. So that's basically your wine opened without any bottle opener whatsoever. Really handy trick um, if you're ever out and about without a corkscrew. You guys as drunks, the two of you will probably need to use that tip quite a lot. Aaron is uh, not happy. That's pretty much it for this week. Tons and tons of photos coming in. Follow us on Twitter at FoodMobTV. 
Facebook, loads of interaction going on there. Keep sending the photos in. Can't believe how much fun you guys are having cooking and how much fun we're having making the show. That's it from this week. You learned how to make prawns with nice spaghetti. Fried some bread up. Showed you how to open a bottle of wine without a corkscrew. Send us in your photos and videos of this week's recipes and we'll feature them this week. Yeah, next week. That's it from Food Mob. Thanks a million, guys.